Sir, could you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury and spell your last name? Yes. Uh, I am Detective Sergeant uh, David Stubbs uh, with the City of Rexburg Police Department. I spell my last name S-T-U-B-B-S. And, um, Your Honor, to ease his testimony and um, in agreement in part with defense counsel, the state is going to move to admit various um, certified copies and business records that relate to this and other witnesses' testimonies. And um, I believe the state has supplied the business records notice to the defense and has supplied notice to the court as is allowed. And so the state's first request would be to um, admit uh, state's exhibit 103, the Amazon certified business records uh, received from Amazon uh, involving uh, Alex Cox and um, providing information attributable to emails from multiple users. Pre copy was previously provided to defense counsel and a courtesy copy was supplied to court. All right, thank you. Exhibit 103 has been offered. Is there any objection from the defense? No objection. Okay. All right, 103 is admitted. Okay. Your Honor, the state would next move um, under the same uh, posture. The state filed the notice for business records and uh, had certified copies supplied to the defense for states 104, uh, the Ballard Insurance Group certified business records um, involving Chad Daybell. All right, 104 has been offered. Any Objection from the defense. No objection. Thank you. 104 is admitted. Thank you. The state will then uh, move to admit under the same uh, rule that the state supplied the business records notice and supplied the certified copy with the affidavit of the custodian for state's exhibit 105, which is the Brigham distributing uh, certified business records for the books and accounting for uh, Chad Daybell, Tammy Daybell, and Spring Creek Book Company from January 1st, 2019 through um, uh, July of 2022. All right. Exhibit 105 has been offered. Is there any objection from the defense? No objection. 105 is admitted. Uh, the state would move to admit states uh, exhibit 106. Uh, it is the certified records from the Expedia group, Expedia group. Um, um, reflecting the travel records and various account records of Lori and Vallo. Any objection on 106? On these uh, certificates, it's affidavit of records, that the actual pages aren't attached to it. I'm just looking at the affidavit of records. Is that correct, counsel? Yes, some of, as as we've done with previous, um, some of all of these were supplied to you in discovery. But rather than supply tens of thousands of sheets of paper to the jury, we will do the specific pages by each witness, um, just so that we don't have. I mean, there's over a hundred thousand pages with some of these records, so we are doing the business record certification just like we did with Detective Consitus. Okay, very good. Yeah, no objection to 106. Okay. All right, thank you. 106 is admitted. Um, the next one is State's Exhibit 107, which are certified Google business records um, for multiple users and accounts um, and was previously supplied by Defense Counsel. Exhibit 107 is offered. Is there any objection? No objection. That will be admitted. And um, the state's next one is State's Exhibit 108, uh, certified business records specifically as to the account associated with Tammy.Daybell at gmail.com and uh, a Fitbit Ulta attributed to uh, Tammy Daybell. Any objection on Exhibit 108? No, Your Honor. Thank you. 108 is admitted. 109 is the Hampton Inn certified business records for um, Alexander Cox and, Cox and Lori Fallow, um, dated uh, records uh, for their folio information for those user accounts. Any objection as to 109? No, Your Honor. Thank you. 109 is admitted. Moving forward in the exhibit list, Your Honor, uh, the state is moving to exhibit 123. 
um, which is the certified business records for um, uh, Rise Broadband uh, for an account attributable to Seth Daybell, but with a service address of 202 North, 1900 East, Rexburg, Idaho. All right, 123 has been offered. Is there any objection? No objection. Uh, 123 is admitted then. The uh, next record would be the certified business records from Southwest um, Life Insurance Company. It um, is, let me make sure I get it, the title correctly, um, Life Insurance Company of Southwest, otherwise known as LSW. Any objection on, did we get a number on that? Oh, I apologize, maybe 124. Thank you. That's Exhibit 124. It's been offered. Any objection? No, Your Honor. 124 is admitted. The next would be a certified business records for from T-Mobile for uh, uh, a specific account, 965804123. And what exhibit number is that? That would be helpful. I apologize, Judge. 124. 125. 125 is offered. Is there any objection? No, Your Honor. 125 is admitted. Uh, the next the state is offering is 126 certified business records and notice for an account uh, with a phone number 2086909374. Any objection as to 126? No. Exhibit 126 is admitted. Uh, the next one would be States Exhibit 127, uh, certified business records from Verizon uh, for multiple phone numbers. Do you want those phone numbers in the record, Judge? Because we have a lot of business, a lot of Verizon accounts. Not necessarily. If these are previously reviewed with counsel and you believe there's a stipulation, I think that's sufficient to identify it. Okay. So 127 is offered. Is there any objection to Exhibit 127? No objection. All right, one, Exhibit 127 is admitted. Um, the next one, and I apologize, apparently they got out of order, um, would be uh, 120, and I apologize, Judge, for Lincoln National Life Insurance Certified Business Records. All right, Exhibit 120 is offered. Is there any objection? Those are the business records for the life insurance policy for Joe Ryan. No objection. All right, Exhibit 120 has been admitted. Next, the state would offer <clears throat> certified business records um, from Verizon um, from a search warrant 2019-42. Uh, and what was the exhibit number? 128. Exhibit 128 is offered. Is there any objection? No. All right, 128 has been admitted. The next would be States Exhibit 129, Certified Business Records for a Search Warrant 2020-41. Any objection as to Exhibit 129? No. Exhibit 129 has been admitted. Um, the next one would be States Exhibit 130 for additional um, Verizon Certified Business Records for a Search Warrant and Associated Data um, 2020-47. Any objection to Exhibit 130? No, Your Honor. It's admitted. Um, the State's Exhibit 131, the uh, business records from uh, Verizon for um, a phone number 801-669-4368, which would be search warrant 2020-14. I believe I said 131, but. You did. Okay, sorry. So Exhibit 131 is offered. Is there any objection? No, Your Honor. Exhibit 131 has been admitted. Okay. The next one is State's Exhibit 132 from uh, Verizon, additional certified business records for cell phones, 20 um, associated with search warrant, search warrants, and uh, the phone number 480-341-9585. All right, that's Exhibit 132 offered. Any objection? No. Exhibit 132 has been admitted. The next one would be State's Exhibit um, 133, additional certified business records for one, two, three, four 
uh, different phone numbers uh, attributable to and associated with some returns for 2020, search warrant 2020-28. Any objection as to exhibit 133? No, Your Honor. That exhibit is now admitted? And then the next would be 131, the bid certified business records. Ms. Um, Smith, we, we've already done 131. Oh, uh, 134. Okay, thank you. Um, clearly should have had more coffee at lunch, Judge, I'm sorry. Um, exhibit 134, the Verizon certified business records for uh, uh, search warrant and 2020-46 and the records for uh, one, two different phone numbers. Exhibit 134 is offered. Is there any objection? No, Your Honor. That exhibit is admitted. This would be a certified business records from AT&T for multiple different um, uh, cell phone numbers associated with um, this case and outline in a request uh, 3002081 and previously supplied to defense counsel. And what was the exhibit number? For 135. Exhibit 135 is now offered. Is there any objection? No. That exhibit is now admitted. Um, Your Honor, the next one would be States Exhibit 136, the certified business records associated um, from a CPA Garth Wilcox for the financial books of Chad and Tammy Daybell. Any objection to 136? No, Your Honor. That exhibit is now admitted. Um, the next would be 137, uh, certified business records uh, from Walmart Pharmacy for information and uh, prescription pharmaceutical records for Tam Tamara Daybell. Any objection to Exhibit 137? No. The, that exhibit's now admitted. And Exhibit 138, uh, certified business records from Life Map Assurance, an insurance company uh, attributed to life insurance and payout information related to Tamara Daybell. All right, Exhibit 138 is offered. Is there any objection? No, Your Honor. 138 is admitted. And then moving forward I, um, is States Exhibit 143, Amazon Certified Business Records. Objection to 143. Is it just the one page or is this attached, Council? It was attached. I could see you had the one page. It's the larger stack. It should be attached to it. No objection, Your Honor. Okay. okay. Exhibit 143 is now admitted. Okay. I, I think that's all those for now, Judge. All right. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Okay. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as I mentioned uh, before, when we have voluminous exhibits that get admitted, this is sometimes a more efficient way to submit those. They will be available for you in your consideration during deliberations, and we appreciate your patience in working through that process, which we need to do orderly to make sure the record of the case is clear. This time you can inquire on direct, then, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Renner. Um, I, I Thank you, Detective Sergeant. Sorry about that. Um, sir, can you um, tell us a little bit about uh, your background? Uh, yeah. Um, I have uh, been involved um, in law enforcement uh, for the past 30 years. Um, I, uh, I'm the, uh, if you will, the second line supervisor over the uh, detective division for the Rexburg Police Department. Um, I guess what that means is uh, uh, our detectives, um, if you will, I assign cases to them. Um, I communicate with them on what they've got going on and so forth and so on uh, to keep things moving smoothly in our division. Um, I uh, am a uh, advanced certificate holder um, for Idaho Post. So when you, uh, what is Idaho Post? Uh, Peace Officer Standards and Training, uh, located in Meridian. Um, so you're Detective Sergeant and you're a supervisor. Do you have any specific training in terms of the actual investigative techniques used in your department? Uh, 
So uh, over the last, I would say, about 12 years, I have, um, if you will, specialized in computer forensics, cell phone forensics, uh, cellular data, um, cellu cellu cellular uh, locating of uh, uh, cell phones and other electronic devices, uh, anything basically dealing with electronic devices. Um, I have received certificates, trainings, uh, hundreds of hours uh, dealing with uh, these kind of things. So these kind of things, that means like the, the collection, the storage, the analysis of evidence obtained from electronic devices? That would be correct. Okay. Do um, you have any idea how many electronic devices you've looked at, used, and analyzed? Uh, I would have to say hundreds. Okay. I, I, I can't give you an exact number. Okay. Now, in addition to your personal um, <clears throat> investigative work and, and working in electronic evidence, um, do you also have supervisory roles that in, uh, were implicated in a case involving uh, J.J. Vallo and Tylee Ryan? Ryan? Yes. Okay. Um, how did you uh, become involved into what ultimately became a homicide investigation into the death of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Uh, okay, so my first involvement uh, with anything to do with the parties involved in this case uh, would have started on November 1st of 2019. So, uh, and what was that first involvement? Uh, we were contacted, first of all, by uh, Fremont County uh, Sheriff's Office. They uh, were requesting that uh, they had been given information from authorities in Arizona. They were interested in uh, finding and locating, if you will, a gray Jeep uh, Wrangler uh, with Texas license plates that they believed was involved in an attempted shooting in their jurisdiction in Arizona. So what did you do? Um, upon receiving this request, several of our officers went to the uh, address that we were given, which would have been 565 Pioneer Road, um, more specifically Apartment 175, uh, where we attempted to locate the before-mentioned Jeep uh, by doing surveillance in that area. So why did you go to that particular apartment? You said you were given information. What information led you there? Uh, information that uh, the Jeep, um, the parties that would be interest, interest in the Jeep were, uh, I believe, four individuals that we were given names of, the first being um, Lori Vallow, Alex Cox, Chad Daybell, and Tylee Ryan. And um, so were those individuals that you, people of interest in connection to this Jeep? Yes. So once you had those names in that address, uh, what process did you and the people who reported you, to you do follow? Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, we went to the residence where several of us set up in different locations doing surveillance on the apartment hoping to discover the whereabouts of the Jeep, where at that time uh, throughout the day we uh, were unable to locate it at that time. Um, and uh, were you eventually able to locate it? Uh, not on that date. Um, it was located on November 4th. So in the, from Around November 1st through November 4th, did you also look for the individuals that you were given names of? Yes. Okay. Um, is that commonly called, did you do surveillance looking for those people? Yes, we did surveillance. Okay. Um, did you ever see any of those individuals? So at one point um, in the afternoon of, of that day, uh, I witnessed um, Lori Vallow, 
and Chad Daybell enter a blue uh, Subaru car and um, leave the residence um, at this time. Because we hadn't found the Jeep, our philosophy was maybe if we were to follow them, they would lead us to where the Jeep was located. And so um, we continued to uh, follow them, hoping to find the Jeep. Um, and who's we? Uh, so there were different officers throughout the day, but actually the ones who uh, followed them, which ultimately ended us up in um, the town of Idaho Falls. Um, there was myself, um, Joe Powell, and uh, that's right there. <laughs> Other officers? Uh, another Fremont officer. Okay. Did um, And so as you followed them, who did you follow? Uh, we followed the blue car, which the occupants were Chad Daybell and Lori Ballow. And did you take any photographs of them? I did. Um, we followed them to Idle Falls. Um, they made a couple stops, uh, a Mountain America Credit Union. And after they left there, they proceeded through the parking lot to the ad adjacent business, which would have been uh, Hobby Lobby. And at that time, um, I parked a short ways away from them and I watched uh, the two of them exit the car, uh, walk through the parking lot together into Hobby Lobby. Okay. Let me, I had moved my exhibits over there, so let me grab them. And forgive me, I think you said you had made the observations. Did you actually photograph them as well? Yes, I took some photographs of them walking toward the store. Okay. Your Honor, um, the state would request that states exhibit 36C and B be shown to the witness. Both co copy, a courtesy copy has been supplied the court and a copy has been given to defense counsel as well. It was also previously disclosed to defense counsel. They can be shown to the witness. Thank you. With that, we can't show the jury yet, but do you recognize states exhibit 36 B and C? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, what are they? Uh, these would be copies of uh, the photographs that I took of the two individuals entering the store. Okay, and what date? Uh, this would have been November 1st, 2019. Okay. Your Honor, move for the admission of States Exhibit 36B and C. Any objection? No. Okay, okay. Exhibits 36B and C are both admitted. Okay. Um, request permission to publish, Your Honor. They may be published. We'll check. We have had an issue, so let's make sure. I just need to be more patient. Let me show you what has been marked. This state's exhibit 36B. Can you describe this for us and tell us what your observations were? Uh, yes. So in this photograph, uh, I was uh, inside of my car took this uh, photograph out of my windshield. Uh, this would be uh, Chad Daybell and Lori Ballow as they uh, were walking into the store. Um, my observations were they were uh, walking, uh, uh, they were holding hands and at times uh, talking and I witnessed uh, Lori at times were was uh, placing her head on his shoulder as they walk toward the store. What are we seeing in 36C? Uh, this would just be, um, as I, if you will, as I was approaching them uh, through the parking lot and I was getting closer um, to them. Uh, this is just another photograph of the same as, uh, as I got closer. They were holding hands and, and walking into the store as well. And at this time on November 1st, did you have an idea as to the nature of the relationship between those two? Um, I had been told um, that they uh, had possibly been together. Okay. Um, and so you indicated that the Jeep was itself was later found? 
Yes, uh, three days later on the 4th, which was a Monday, it was located at that residence, okay. the before mentioned residence. At, in which particular apartment? Uh, well, in the parking lot outside of apartment 175. Okay. And um, when it was located, was that vehicle seized? Yes, we had been requested to uh, recover the, the vehicle for uh, Arizona. Okay. And um, did the Rexburg Police Department do that? Yes, okay. we had the vehicle towed uh, to our secure impound lot. Okay. And who was um, identified, if you remember, who was identified as the owner of that vehicle? I believe the owner, um, at least on the registration, was uh, Joe Ryan and Tylee Ryan. Okay. Um, and so on November 4th, when the car is towed, did anybody call the police looking for the car? Uh, so from that time until uh, really our, my next uh, encounter with them, there were no inquiries as to where, um, where the car had, had gone. Um, we had even tried to reach out and say that we had taken the car, um, but were not able to get a hold of anybody. And uh, nor did anyone require, uh, inquire that their vehicle was missing. Okay. Um, and Tylee Ryan was a teenager, and it, it was known to be her car? Yes, it was known to be what she would drive. Okay. Now, you said your next encounter with them. What was the next encounter with them? So after, after this encounter involving the Jeep, um, again on... Uh, August 6th or August 26th, we had received information. I'm uh, sorry, what date? Uh, September, sorry, September 26th, we had received information um, that uh, a child. I'll object, Your Honor, hearsay. That'll be sustained. Okay. Um, did you, you said there was another encounter with them? So the Jeep was seized November 4th, and forgive me, I may have misheard. The registered owner on that car was Charles Vallow and Tylee Ryan? Or, I don't know. No, I believe it was Joe Ryan and okay. Tylee Ryan. Okay. And then after November 4th, what was the next contact you had with um, anyone involved in the group you discussed? Uh, that would have been um, September 26th. September 26th of 2019? Correct. Okay. Um, what occurred then? Um, we had been requested uh, to again go to that particular residence where we uh, were asked uh, as a to do a welfare check on a child uh, by the name of J.J. Vallow. This request uh, was at the request of his uh, grandmother. Understood. So um, did that request for the wild child check on J.J. Vallow happen before the Jeep was found or after the Jeep was found? Uh, the welfare check was after the Jeep was found. Okay. And the Jeep was found November 4th? It was seized November 4th, yes. Okay. And then the welfare check on the child occurred after that? Correct. So that would be November or September, because you were saying September Sorry. earlier. It was, my mistake, uh, November 26th is when we made that contact. Okay. And um, when you say we made that contact, how did how was contact made? So um, Detective Hermosillo had received the uh, initial request on uh, the welfare check. Uh, Detective Hermosillo had gotten with uh, myself in regards to um, that he had received that request. Being uh, the supervisor, if you will, he uh, would keep us in the loop of... I'll object, Your Honor, to hearsay. It does appear that's starting to elicit hearsay. Yeah, Your Honor, I'm actually not offering it for the truth of what Hermosillo said, but this caused um, the detective sergeant to take a particular step and that makes logical connection to why he made that step. 
Okay, fair enough. If, uh, the witness can get there without indicating specific statements of others. I think that would be more appropriate. Okay. Um, uh, after receiving information about proceeding to an address, what did you do? Uh, at some point, myself and uh, Lieutenant Ball uh, went back to that location at 565 Pioneer Road, number 175, where um, we were asked if we could help try and locate uh, Lori Vallow and do a welfare check on her son, J.J. Vallow. Okay. Um, and so when you said you were asked to do that, um, uh, do you know the basis of that request? I know that Detective Hermosillo and Detective Hope had gone over that location uh, trying to inquire uh, about J.J., he had came, he had... I'll, I'll object, Your Honor. Yeah, and I, I can move on. I, I, I'm trying to get there. I'll get around it. Thanks. Um, let me ask it in a different way. So without saying what somebody told you, um, why did you go to that address at one, um, 175? We were requested to do so to help with locating the child, J.J. Vallow. Is it typical for the lieutenant and the sergeant to go on those calls? Uh, it would be, it would be yes. Okay, and um, so once you guys got there, what did you find? Um, at that time, um, we made contact, or we knocked on the door of apartment one seventy five to make contact uh, with Lori Vallow with the objective of doing a welfare check on J.J. Vallow. Okay. Um, and once you got to that location, were you able to make contact with Lori Vallow? Yes, we were. Okay. And um, during that contact, um, were you able to have a conversation with Lori Vallow? Yes. Okay. Now, were you wearing any sort of body cam? Uh, I was wearing a body cam, yes. Okay. And just so that we're all clear, what is a body cam? Uh, typically, officers, um, when they're dealing uh, in the course of their job, um, uh, wear body cam so that encounters that uh, we have with, if you will, the public um, can be documented uh, for not only the safety of the officer, but the safety of the public we deal with. Okay. And um, the body cam you were wearing on November 26th, was it on and operating when you made contact with Lori Vallow? Yes. And um, in anticipation of testifying today, did you review or prepare and review a um, thumb drive with a copy of that recording? Yes, I did. Okay. And um, that recording... Um, was it a true and accurate copy of the recording of your body cam of your initial contact with Lori Vallow on November 26th? Yes, it is. Okay. May I ask that the witness be given State's Exhibit 59, Your Honor? Yes. Do you recognize State's Exhibit 59? I do. It is a uh, flash drive uh, that I prepared with... Uh, my first encounter body cam also has my handwriting on it. Okay. Your Honor, I move for the admission of State's Exhibit 59. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Okay. Exhibit 59 is admitted. I request permission to play it for the jurors. You may. And again, for the record, the exhibit is the thumb drive. Uh, it contains that only the one file on the thumb drive. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. And Ms. Smith, do you happen to know the length of the footage? I, I, I don't want to be wrong. Detective Sergeant, what is it about? How long is it? Probably about five minutes. Okay. All right, thank you. Or less. Thanks. I think we're ready, Judge. Thanks. Very well. You can publish that. Yes.
most of my body cam footage as uh, myself and Lieutenant Ball uh, approach the apartment number 175 the first time on the 26th. Okay. Her car's out there too. In the back, it's blue. It's blue Subaru. Police Department, how are you? You got a minute? You alone or that help? Uh, my brother's here. Okay. This is Detective Stubbs. Hello. So, we're here. Yeah, this is a big mess. I just talked to the guy on the phone. And what did he ask you? He was just saying that he wanted to do a well check on JJ. So, JJ would be where? He's in Arizona. <laughs> Who's he with in Arizona? He's with one of my friends in Arizona. Oh. Hi. Oh, hey. you got a notepad? No. Want me to get one? Uh, hey. No, no. Come here. It's, you mind if he comes in? No, come on. So, Thank you. Sorry. who's the friend he's with? My friend Melanie. Her Melanie. son has autism. Her name is Melanie Gibbs. I gave him all the information on the phone. Okay, so he can call him? Yeah. Birth. Uh, Discord. Yeah. What is all this? We're, we're a little what concerned. Because, right. well, the officers who were here earlier yeah. were checking, and they got a bad vibe that, like, something was going on here because uh, nobody knew anything about a child. They weren't talking. It's because a uh, lot of stuff has gone on. If you want to know, it's a lot of stuff. So, well, that's why we're concerned, because very, it just was kind of weird. It is very weird. I've had to move around a lot. One of my brothers is trained to kill me, not the brother that lives here, obviously. He's kind of my protector. <laughs> my other brother that was in with my husband who was trying to kill me for my $200 life insurance. Oh. No. Well, well, no. <laughs> so a lot of stuff has gone on in this last year. It's been a horrible year for us. I've had to move around. And so I was going to move back to Arizona, put my son back in the school there because I tried to put him in school here, public school at Kennedy. Okay. He went for two months. We tried it, but he had such a hard time. Now, the person who called is my sister-in-law, but she's his natural grandmother. He's adopted by us. Okay, so her son, who is a drug addict, okay. had a baby with a girl who's a drug addict, and they took him from, you know, CPS took him, okay. gave him to the grandmother. She came and got him, and then she wanted us to adopt him, which we did. And we loved by him. Us, and we my about? husband and I, who died earlier this year okay he passed away since he Sorry, passed yeah. away she's been trying to fight me for him and being really horrible to me and my friend the she's kind of the paternal friend okay thank Does you that makes that's what sorry. i mean <laughs> the paternal grandmother yeah, he has autism and adhd he has he doesn't really talk to people like he's he's very special needs so i had him in a special needs school there she was trying to so what happened was my husband, who we were married for 15 years and had raised all these five kids together, switched his life insurance policy to her, right? To, <laughs> to his sister, okay. who got a million dollars when he died, and we got nothing. For me to raise JJ, and all the kids got nothing, and everybody got nothing. She got a million dollars. So I knew she was going to try to sue me for him. or for JJ? Yeah, because she now has this million dollars, so she can hire people to help. Him and I have nothing. But you have nothing, legal but custody. He's my son. I adopted him. Right. He was two years. We had him from the time he was eight months old until two years old. So she does nothing who wants to cause me trouble. So I don't tell people the truth about where we are and what we're doing because of those reasons. So I look like a suspect, but I am not a good person. I've raised all of my kids. I've done everything that I'm supposed to do in life. But 
Everyone is causing me trouble right now. So. We don't want to cause a lot of trouble. How long have you been here? We've only been here since September. Okay. We moved up here in September. My daughter to go to BYUI. Your right. daughter goes to BYUI? Yeah. Does she live here? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we just, it's been a nightmare, but I'm going to go back to Arizona so I can put him back in the special needs school. He couldn't do the school here. It was too hard for him. He would scream and cry, take him to school. The principal would have to come out, try to drag him out of the car. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's too hard. But I just don't tell people where I am. I don't tell her where I am ever. Okay. And she doesn't have any legal rights to anything. Like, she's been horrible to me since my husband died. My understanding, she never called you to try to get the child, you know, hey, I'm interested in the child back, you know. But that. I know, but she sends me these emails with, like, the dates and, like, like she's putting up court stuff, you know. Like, she's documenting. I haven't heard from him in all this time. And. So I've told her that he's fine. But See, and we hadn't heard any of that as far as... I'm just saying she's doing this as part of that, yeah. is my understanding. And our only concern in this whole thing yeah, is, that is, the, is the child. I got it. And and so that's that's where we're at on the... Uh, so. And then so we I were just a little her. weirded out when, you know, and, and I understand now that we've heard your side of the story. It's awful. They just the, feel like I'm being tracked all the time. I'm like, why are police coming to my well, door? What's the idea? They said they were out visiting with two guys. And I'm assuming one's your brother. Who was visiting? Yeah. Who was the other one? The other guy they were visiting with. There were two. Visiting? Well, we had two detectives over here trying to. Looking for you oh. a little while ago. Oh, because I was at the store. And they ran into well, probably one of your brothers. In my the back brother here. and his friend, probably. Oh, who's They've been that? moving. Chad. Chad from around here? Mm-hmm. What's his last name? Go. Okay. All right. So, uh, it's just a mess. It's constantly causing me trouble. Chad the be- Chad the B A Y B E L O? He's an author. Doesn't he live like out in the. Isn't that the Chad the Bell that. Uh, did his wife pass away recently? Is that him? I I don't know. But it is. She had D A Y B E L L. But it sounds familiar as an author. I think I, know, I think I know one of his. He's got a couple of daughters. No, uh, he has lots of kids. Okay. I'll bet it's safe. All right. Well, maybe anything else? Sorry to bother you. Thank you. Yeah. We don't mean to be a problem. I'm sorry that people are constantly knocking on my door. <laughs> oh my door is looking for me and I just don't want to be found. So. Have you had problems? Because I think we only had. My bro- well, the reason I'm moving is because the brother that was going to kill me, that we found emails and texts with my ex-husband, my husband at the time, came showing up here. So he found out where I was and he was knocking on my door. No, this was your brother? One of my brothers. He showed up here and was knocking on your door. He lives in Kansas. And you said something about you were getting threatening emails? Well, th- no. Just after my husband passed, I found emails and texts between them that they were planning all this stuff to yeah. get rid of me. Do we need to worry about him coming over? Well, that's when I'm moving back. I'm well, moving, and I'm not going to be in a place. I'm going to live with my friend, Melanie. Don't tell him. Oh, you can call. I'm going to take care of it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just, like... Just a nightmare. I mean, I canceled the insurance policy since my husband passed, so there's no money if they can. <laughs> and what are they going to do with JJ and Tyler? Like, what do people think? Okay. So. Well, <laughs> if you have a problem, show us back up. Feel free to call us. Right. We'll come and run him off or something. Okay. Yeah, All right. Okay, we'll get out of your hair. Okay. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. <clears throat> uh-uh. Not. Not. So, um, Detective Sergeant, uh, Judge, at what point do you want to do a lunch break? Do you want me to finish this part?
I mean, not lunch break, an af mid afternoon break. I, I think any time now in the next five or ten minutes would be fine, or now if you'd like. Well, I can finish this section and then there will be another video to play so we can break between the two. Let's do that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Um, so, d what parts of that conversation stood out to you that caused you to take additional steps? So, at this time, when we made this contact uh, with Lori, um, there were certain things that uh, that I knew already. Um, first being um, that when we addressed um, Chad Daybell, she referred to Chad as her brother's friend. However, at this time, number one, I had seen the two of them affectionate together in the parking lot of Hobby Lobby. Number two, at this time, we also knew that they had previously been married. Uh, did um, anything about um, any concerns about somebody in the apartment? So she had stated that um, Alex, her brother, Alex, was in the apartment. Um, a lot of my attention at that time, if you were to notice the stairwell to my right, um, I had concern um, because of what had previously been told to me by other officers about officer safety. And I'll object, Your Honor, to hearsay. I'll overrule that. Okay. Um, what was your concern for officer safety? Um, as mentioned in the video, um, Officer Hermosillo and Hope had contacted Chad and Alex um, outside. They were concerned with the answers that were given to them. I'll object, Your Honor, to hearsay. If I can connect, the next question is, what was it about you that led you to be uh, about that that led you to be concerned for officer safety in the apartment that we saw on the video? And, and the only way he can answer that is by referring to what others told him. That's my objection. All right. There is an objection based on hearsay or that would have, it would elicit hearsay. What's your response to that, Ms. Smith? Um, Your Honor, in, in this instance, it, the statements go to this, uh, this witness's state of mind. It also explains some of his observations inside the apartment, and I'm not technically offering it for the truth of what Lieutenant, I mean, uh, Detective Hermosillo said is to explain what his observations were and his um, reaction to the situation he was in inside that apartment. All right. The court does find that uh, in this instance the hearsay objection will be overruled based on the response of the state. So you can re-ask the question if you want or if the uh, detective remembers, he can answer. Okay. Do you remember the question? Why don't you refresh my memory? <laughs> um, what what um, what information did you have that led you to be concerned for officer safety? Well, not only um, were we dealing with a situation where there one of these individuals possibly was involved in attempted shooting in Arizona um, was one of our concerns that for officer safety and number two. Uh, statements made to us that uh, the individuals um, were being evasive and and lying. Uh, also, as officers, heightened our awareness of our own safety. So while you were in there, I, you mentioned something about observations of the stairs. What were your observations of the stairs? Well, one of the other odd things that I, I felt at that time, um, Lori said that her brother was, was there. And uh, I found it odd that um, where he had been talked to just minutes earlier that he wouldn't come down and, or if he was there, engage in this, in, in this conversation. But my attention was drawn because at the top of the stairs I could, uh, I could see movement, um, whether there was a window or a light that was reflecting 
and I can see movement as it uh, moved back and forth off the reflection of a wall. And at that time, I was I was concerned for safety if someone was to come down and try and surprise us. And so at the end of the conversation, there was something about um, follow-up that was going to be done? What, when you left Lori Vallow's apartment that day at that first visit, um, what um, information, uh, where is the law enforcement going to act on? So she she expressed uh, when we talked to her that she had given the information by phone to one of my coworkers to how to contact her friend, Melanie Gibb, who she claimed JJ was with, and some and work out some kind of a, a welfare check so we could check on the safety of the child. Okay. And so at that point, that's when you and Lieutenant Ball, and who else was in that video from the law enforcement end? Uh, that would have been uh, Officer Kellen Wetton. Okay. So that's when you, Officer Wetton, and Lieutenant Ball left under the belief that there was going to be contact with Melanie Gibb? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, this would be a... I have another video after this. So. Okay, let's go ahead and take our mid-afternoon break. We did take a fairly long lunch, so we'll try to shorten this one up if we can somewhat, but it does take time to get all of our jurors situated and comfortable to return, so we'll uh, come back in just hopefully 15 minutes or so. Okay, we're back on the record on CR 22211624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. I'll remind uh, the witness, Detective Stubbs, you're still under oath for your testimony. We took our mid afternoon break and we'll continue with your direct examination at this time, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Detective Sergeant, did you um, end up going back to Lori Vallow's apartment that day? Yes. Okay, and that was to be cleared November 26th. November 26th, 2019. Okay. And why did you go back to Lori Vallow's apartment? So in our original encounter, uh, as you saw in the previous video, she had said uh, that she talked with one of our detectives and was arranging a conversation with Melanie Gibb with us concerning the welfare of J.J. Vallow. At, at this point, we weren't able to get a hold of Melanie Gibb. She wasn't answering her phone, and the other detective advised us that she wasn't answering. So we decided to return to her apartment. And so um, was that also mm -hmm. on body cam? Yes. All right. And will you take a look at what's been given to you as State's Exhibit 60? Have you looked at that? I have looked at this. Okay. What is it? Uh, it's a USB flash drive. Um, uh, containing uh, the second encounter uh, with my body cam uh, when we went back the second time okay. to Lori's residence. Okay, on November 26th? Correct. And you prepared that exhibit, and it's the same exhibit you prepared? Yes. Okay, move for the admission of State's Exhibit 60. Any objection to Exhibit 60? No, Your Honor. All right, Exhibit 60 is admitted. And I request permission to publish, Your Honor. <clears throat> you can publish it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.
So, um, Detective Sergeant, after that um, conversation with her, did, what was the next involvement that you um, or officers had? What was your next involvement after that conversation? As far as that day? That day. <laughs> I'm sorry? That day? That, well, that was our last encounter with her that day, yes. Did you have any contact with her after that? No. Okay. Um, and then what steps, if any, did your department take um, in response to that visit? Well, due to um, the information she provided to us this day, we were able to get a hold of uh, Gibb, Melanie Gibb, uh, later that afternoon evening she advised us that she did not have JJ she was not in Arizona and they had not been to the movies she said she was currently or I'll currently object your honor to hearsay sustain um, so did the conversation with Melanie Gibb um, uh, let's do this. Um, so given some of the information that you had, did you um, assess the statements that Lori Vallow made to law enforcement that yeah. day? Yes. Did you find any of those statements, um, did, were they by and large accurate or were they by and large inaccurate? By and large inaccurate. Um, how so? Uh, she had stated... Uh, J.J. was in Arizona. He was not. And, and I'll object, Your Honor, to hearsay. The only way he can answer that is with hearsay. Um, he's talking about the defendant's statements, Your Honor. That's what I understood also. Those are the statements of a party opponent, so the hearsay objections overruled. Okay. Maybe the witness could clarify who's, who's making the statement. Okay. So what statements of Lori Vallow did you find inaccurate? Lori had told us um, that her son, J.J., was in Arizona. Um, Lori Vallow had told us that her daughter was attending BYU-Idaho. Um, Did you have any information about her relationship with Chad Daybell, and was that consistent or inconsistent with what she told you? Uh, like I before mentioned, we already knew that her and Chad were married at that time. Okay. Um, and um, did you in do any research into whether somebody had traveled to Rexburg um, and, uh, in, in an attempt to kill her? Yes, she stated that her, she stated to us, Lori stated to us that her brother had come to Rexburg to her apartment in an attempt to kill her for a life insurance policy. Um, it, did your investigation reveal whether or not that brother had, had ever even been in Rexburg? Uh, and I'll object. The only way to answer that is through hearsay. That's sustained. Okay. Um, did you investigate the various statements that Lori Vallow made, and um, did 
your investigation into those statements result in you and members of your office uh, department taking steps? Yes. Okay. So what statements were investigated that Lori Vallow, what additional step statements were investigated that um, Lori Vallow made to you? If I'm, if I'm understanding your question, um, statements of her life being in danger were looked into. Um, Did you find any evidence to substantially substantiate that? We did not. Okay. Um, did you look into whether Tylee Ryan ever enrolled at BYU? Yes. Did you find any evidence to find that Tylee Ryan en enrolled at BYU? No. Did you look into whether she was enrolling JJ in a special needs school in Arizona? Yes. Did you find any evidence to say that she had, in fact, um, re-enrolled JJ down in Arizona in a special needs school? We did not. Did you find any evidence um, in response to her statement that um, she, the principal had to drag JJ into the school in Rexburg? Yes. Okay. So the principal had to drag. Did did you find evidence to substantiate that JJ had to be drugged into school in Rexburg? Sorry, I must have misunderstood. We did look into it, and we found no evidence that that was the case. Okay. Um, and did you look into where Melanie Gibb was located um, at the time the defendant was claiming she was in Arizona with JJ? Yes. Did you find whether or not that was true, that Melanie Gibb was actually in Arizona? I'll object. The only way to answer that is through hearsay. I'll overrule that objection. Okay. <coughs> Will you ask that again, please? Absolutely. Did you find evidence um, to show that Melanie Gibb was in Arizona at the time Lori Vallow claimed she was in, that Melanie Gibb was in Arizona? She was not in Arizona. Okay. So given these these uh, various statements, um, did you also consider the um, connection to the Jeep that was wanted um, from Arizona in making any decisions? So Can I you know, rephrase that I know there was, some, there was coughing. Did you um, consider the factor that the Jeep um, was wanted in connection to an attempted homicide in Arizona, in connection to your analysis of Lori Vallow's statements. Yes. Okay. Now, did any did looking at that analysis and investigation lead your department to make any investigative decisions? Yes. At this time. What yes. did you guys decide to do about this stuff? Due to the facts that we had discovered. Um, uh, which a lot of those were discovered later that evening. Um, an effort was made to uh, obtain a search warrant to go back to the residence and search the residence for uh, evidence of J.J. Vallow. Okay. So um, did your department obtain that search warrant um, it, as to the apartment on... Um the apartments on Pioneer Road? Yes, uh, warrants were obtained for three different apartments in that complex. And what was your role in uh, the execution of the, that search warrant or search warrants? Uh, again, um, I, I was ass assisting um, officers um, to search those residents for uh, evidence of J.J. Vallow. Um, part of my role was to, uh, I did take video footage uh, once the apartments were gone into and that they were, uh, if you will, cleared of any danger. Um, I went in and documented uh, apartments 174 and 175 uh, with video okay. footage. All right. um, 
May I ask that the witness be given State's Exhibit 7J a copy of the, his footage? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, is 7J a copy of your footage and recording of the, um, the recording that you did November uh, 27th, 2020 of the apartments 175? Uh, 2019, yes. Okay. Um, you move for the admission of State's Exhibit. It's 7J, Your Honor. Any objection to 7J being admitted? No. All right. Exhibit 7J is admitted. And I'm going to request permission to publish this, Your Honor. It can be published. Thank you.
laundry room to the right. Continue down the hall to the left, a furnace, water heater, closet. Opposite that is a bathroom. Continuing down the hall, two bedrooms. Uh, one to the uh, south, one to the north of the hallway. This is the one to the south. A single bed, a double bed, a closet containing a couple coats, one empty box, a fan, some empty hangers, what appears to be a bedspread, and this box here that uh, appears to have uh, possibly winter clothes, female winter clothes inside. Continuing to the other bedroom. This is the one to the north. We have a bed. Appears to be some bedding on the floor. Uh, we have three cases here, all containing uh, guitars. Uh, looks like a a uh, duffel bag full of uh, toiletry items that would appear to be uh, belong to a male subject due to the and so forth inside. This closet uh, is also uh, fairly barren. Looks like there are two samurai swords inside the closet, empty laundry basket, another basket uh, containing some odds and ends of some sort. Uh, nothing else in this room. Your Honor, um, we're happy to keep going. Whatever the court's intention is, this um, officer did numerous electronic search warrants. Um, so you tell me how you want to proceed now. Of course, do it. All right. Well, I know um, we aren't uh, going to be on tomorrow. However, I still want to keep with our trial calendar. So we are at that time. I would suggest we'll adjourn if this is a good time in your examination to do so. Yes, sir. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, then we will go ahead and resume again on Monday. And with the three days now, again, I'll tell you specifically, as I've told you every day before, um, please follow the court's admonishment to not talk about this case with anyone else or amongst yourselves while you're on this break. Please do not do anything to investigate the case. Don't look up any of the news coverage of the case. Don't follow any stories that are reporting on the case. I uh, very much continued, uh, very much appreciate how you have continued to follow this admonishment every single day, every one of you. Uh, your jury service is greatly appreciated by the court and by the parties. So with that in mind, we will recess for the day and we'll resume again at 8.30 on Monday for uh, what I believe should be a full trial next week.